Bienvenidos, Ushamdi, and welcome. CTS 231, Section 841 students for the second eight-week term of the fall 2017 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the Networking 4, or the Connecting Networks V6 course from the Cisco Networking Academy. And this morning's video tutorial and solution set is going to be on Packet Tracer Activity 4.2.2.12. We're taking our third look at extended ACLs. Again, you can see how important extended ACLs are going to be from not only a certification perspective, uh, but also a uh, real world perspective. So really a lot of attention given to extended ACLs throughout this course. So now we've got uh, sort of a much larger activity and you can see here uh, that they're not giving us a lot of the information that they were prior to this activity. So we're going to be creating uh, a named ACL, extended, uh, a named extended ACL here. We're going to be blocking HTTP, we're going to be blocking some FTP, and we're going to be blocking some ICMP, and we're talking about Server 1 and Server 2. Now, Server 1 and Server 2, you can see we've got some 64 addresses here. These are clearly going to be out here in this, uh, you know, this internet cloud that we've got. And one of the things I wanted to highlight is uh, Andrew noticed that when you mouse over, for some reason, when I do it here on VMware Fusion, it, it doesn't work. But be very careful when you mouse over these interfaces. He was indicating that when you mouse over, it shows you the wrong interface. So when you go into the router, it's the right interface, but when you mouse over it, it's showing you the wrong interface. And so we'll take a look at that as well to make sure we're on the right interface. So let's go ahead and get this going. I'm going to do this from down here this time and give us a lot of space down here and kind of come right up onto the icons for router one. All right, so let's jump onto the CLI. So serial 000, zero, zero from loading to full. So it looks like we're running OSPF uh, with that cloud. All right, so what are we going to be doing first? So we're going to deny PC1 access to HTTP and HTTPS services. Uh, you must configure the statements in the order specified. So we're going to deny HTTP. So create an extended ACL. So let's go from user exec to privilege exec into global config, and it's going to be named. So we know we have to start with IP, access list. What type of access list? Extended. Then what's the name going to be? And again, the numbers are there, not so that you can use a number for a name. Right, the numbers are there, that 100 through 199, those are there so that we can go in to a numbered extended ACL and make modifications to it based off the order that the statements uh, occur, right? So I could insert a statement like we did in the previous video. I could remove a statement at a certain location. That's why this syntax and those options are available. I can't use a number for a name, right? So. Let's make sure here. So create an extended access list named ACL. All right, so what is the command to begin the ACL? So there we go. Now it says record the statement that denies access from PC1 to server one only for HTTP. And I think they had, they wanted, there was a limit of four entries here. One, two, three. I think they're going limit, to limit us to four entries. So what is the entry going to be? Well, we could put a sequence number in here and go one, two, three, four. Typically, you don't do that. You're going to let it default, and it's going to go in increments of 10, starting at 10. So we're simply going to say, record the statement that denies. So we're going to say deny, and then what? What protocol are we denying? Well, HTTP and HTTPS, what protocol do those use? Exactly, they use TCP. Now remember, we're going to deny TCP and think of it alphabetically, from to, F-T. So from whom are we denying access? Well, we know it's PC1. So can we use the host keyword? Absolutely, right? Or we could put the IP, the, the exact IP of PCA, or I'm sorry, PC1, followed by the quad zeros. But again, much easier just to say host and we're going to say 172.31.1.101. So we're denying TCP, 
right, from host 172.31.1.101, and who are we denying it to? Well, we're denying it to server one. So again, I could say server one's IP and quad zeros, but why do that when we've got the host keyword? So 64.101.255.254. Okay, now we're not done yet. If I hit enter right now, and then I tried to SSH to the host, to server one, it's gonna get denied, right? Remember, we're not trying to deny all TCP protocols, right, of which we see a limited uh, list here. We could do a range, actually, if I were to put the equal in. You can see we've got a limited list here of things we can pick from. But again, I'm not trying to block all TCP. I'm trying to block only in this instance for that statement right here to server one for HTTP only, so equal to www. I could have also put 80, but if I put 80, it's gonna put www in there. So we'll say equal www. So there's our first statement. So now it says record the statement that denies access from PC1 to server one only for HTTPS. So from here, right, I don't need to type it all out. I can pull this back and come back and say equal to 443, port 443. Now, I'm curious to see, we didn't see points because it says port 80 here in parentheses. I'm curious if they wanted me to use the port number instead of www. And we'll, we'll find out. So there we've got the equal to 443. So now it says record the statement that denies access from PC1 to server 2 for HTTP. So I could just pull this back and change it to server 2, which is going to be 103, right? And that does the same thing. And then bring it back and say 443. And that does the same thing. That denies access from PC1 to server 2. So there's our four statements. Now, we're going to be denying PC2 access to FTP services on server one and server two. And now it says port 21 only. And remember with FTP, if we were to use the FTP keyword, what we're doing is we're saying port 20 and 21, right? And remember that there is a very, very subtle difference there. So again, if I was to deny port 20 as opposed to 21, what we're saying is uh, we're only blocking, because one of the ports is data, right? So one of the ports is the data port, uh, and the other port is the, uh, let me make sure I say this right. It's basically the connection port and the data port. And so you want to block both, typically, and so you would block, you would say FTP, but when we're only blocking port 21, that's that's going to open up the control the control port. That's the word I'm looking for, the control port. So blocking 20 is going to be the data port. 21 is the port that opens up the connection, which is the control, the commander control port. All right, so I've got that sorted out. So here's what we're going to say. We're going to record the statement that denies access from PC2 to server 1. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to say deny, and we know that FTP uses, oops, we know FTP uses TCP, and so we're going to say host, we're going to do PC2 here, so 172.31.1.102, make sure we get these right. And again, very straightforward to host, server 1 is 64.101.255.254. Now, remember, they want us to say only port 20. I'm sorry, only port 21. So it says port 21 only. So we'll go with equal to 21. And then it says PC2 to server 2. Well, again, this is, again, some easy lifting here to change the 101 to a 103. And there we go. So that takes care of those two entries. Now, deny PC3 uh, the ability to ping server 1 and server 2. So we're going to say deny ICMP from host, and this is PC3 172.31.1.103, to host, again, server 1, 
64.101.255.254. Now, it doesn't say any of the specific messages for ICMP or, you know, the deny or whatever. So we're going to go ahead and leave it right there. We're denying all ICMP, and then we're also doing it to server, excuse me, to server two. And then, very important, it says permit all other IP traffic. Now, remember, we've got all of these deny statements in here right now. That's all we have. So if I said do show IP access list ACL. That's what we have right now. And the reason that we have all these deny statements is because we're picking off services that we want to deny, and then everything else is going to be allowed. So what do we say? We say permit IP, and then we're not using it. We're not going to put source addresses in here. We're just going to say any, any. So from anywhere to anywhere, we're going to permit everything else because we've already defined that which we're going to deny. So we would say permit IP any any. As you can see, we magically bumped up to 80 here. So now apply and verify the extended ACL. And so now we get to the question, where does it get applied? Does it get applied as close to the source as possible, right? In the inbound direction? Or are we going to have to apply it here, like we saw in activity 42211, in the outbound direction? Well, from looking at this, right, everybody is coming through this port. It's not as if, like in activity 42211, there's no other switch. I'm sorry, I'm drawing with the mouse right now. There's no other switch with, it's not as if PC whoops, one, two, and three, PC2 is there, and then PC3, right, here's another switch, let's say, and PC3 was on a different subnet, and PC3 was hanging off of here, right, that's not the case. If, it, if this was the case where we had this other port here and another port here, like 42211, then that would probably be the best location for this ACL in the outbound direction. But that's not the case. All of the hosts that we have come through a single switch, and all of that traffic is passing through that single port right there. So we're going to be doing it on this port in the inbound direction. And here's where Andrew noticed, and again, my iMac is very slow, so when I mouse over an interface, you'll notice we don't see... It's not showing you what the interface is. Typically, if you're doing this on your PC, you're going to see that interface. And Andrew noticed that when you mouse over, it shows you the wrong interface. So uh, apply the ACL. OK, and then we're going to test access. So I'm just making sure we're not missing anything there. All right, so let's apply that ACL. So what interface is that? Well, let's find out. Let's go ahead and say end. And let's save our config just to be sure. I'm going to say show IP interface brief. And again, it's pretty straightforward that it's gig zero zero. I think Andrew said when you mouse over it, it shows gig zero one. That is not the interface. So it's gig zero zero. We could test it by shutting it down, but I'm confident that since that's the only one listed there on the LAN side, and we know the serial interface goes out to the WAN side, let's go ahead and go into global config interface gigabit ethernet zero zero. And we're gonna say IP access group. Remember, not access class, it's access group. And what did we call our ACL? Very original name, just ACL. And it would be in the inbound direction. And that should get us the 20 points, and it does. But we've got to validate connectivity now. So access the websites of Server 1 and Server 2 using the web browser from PC1 and using both HTTP and HTTPS. So we'll come over here to PC1, pull the desktop up, we'll pull up our web browser, and I'm going to say HTTP colon slash slash. 64101.255.254. And we'll hit go. And what happens? Does anything work? It doesn't. So let's do this. Let me pull the ACL off of here. Let's validate that it works. So we, it'll take the 20 points off. That's fine. But ah, very good. See, it works right now, right? Let's take a look at the small page. We'll go back, the copyrights. 
We'll go back. The images, which probably don't work, we'll go back. So you can see that it works now, right? So let's put the ACL back on here, and now let's go to a small page. Yeah, not working. Copyright's not working. So let's try HTTPS. Let's go ahead and quickly pull the ACL off, and let's make sure that it works. So HTTPS colon slash slash 64.101. Dot 255.254. Dot so HTTPS works, right? We've got our copyrights, and then let's put the ACL back on. Does it work? Click on my image page, no. Copyrights, no. Small page, no. So we're, nothing's working, right? It's being blocked. So now let's access FTP uh, from PC1 as well. And to do that, we're going to go back here, the command prompt. And let's see, can I FTP to 64101, 255, 254? Absolutely, because remember, we were permitting, hold on, were we permitting that? I think we were permitting that, let's check. Oh, right, right, right. So we were denying uh, FTP, but we were denying it from 72.102. Two from PC2. Yeah, so it works for PC1, and we can put Cisco in there. And oh, I'm sorry, I put that in for my username. All right, well, it did this little thing here, so we're good. We, we know that it's working from PC1. And let's come to PC2 now and go to the desktop and come to the command prompt and type in FTP 64101.255.254. .254, and you can see it does, it has the intended effect. So again, we were picking off denying PC2, right? But allowing PC1, and let's see, for good measure, let's see if FTP, and we'll use server uh, 103.255.254. And there we go, and we can connect, and the username and password, oh, the username and password is Cisco. Sorry, I thought I had the username wrong. So there we go, so we're logged in. And that's working. And can we ping server one and server two from PC one? Let's give it a try. Let's exit out here, quit. And let's ping 64.101.255.254. And we can because we were not denying ICMP for PC one. Who were we denying? Whoops, 103. Who were we denying ICMP for? Where's it at? One. 1.103, which is PC3. So PC2 should also work. I should be able to ping 64.101.255.254, and that works. But when we come to PC3, is it going to work? Ping 64.101.255.254. No. We get a reply, right? An ICMP unreachable coming back to us from our default gateway. And then let's try 103. Exactly, it should not work. All right, well that is going to wrap up Packet Tracer Activity 4.2.2.12. Remember, when we're talking about ACLs, we are talking about stateless packet filters, not stateful. And we saw how we do the extended ACLs in this scenario. We also saw where we do the denies first and then we allow everything else through, right? All right, well, that's it for Packet Tracer 4.2.2.12. I will see you all on Tuesday night. Have a great weekend.